Hi there, my name is Alex Telford and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to create realistic jewellery in Blender using the new Cycles rendering engine. Now as Cycles is still heavily under development, before we begin, create, before we begin creating a jewellery, we must first download, install and set up a current build of Blender with Cycles enabled. So, first thing we need to do is we need to pop over to graphical.org now you can get a, the a version of cycles from blender.org the main blender site but to get one that's a little bit more supported um, it's best just to go to graphical.org and then you can download a quite a fast build so you can see I've already pulled one up blender 2.61 with QGIS support now using uh, graphical.org it's very simple you just select your operating system. I have a Windows machine. And select 64 bit as I have a 64 bit computer. The easiest way to do it is just select the top one that you see that says 2.61 or greater. And if you have a if if you have NVIDIA graphics cards, then it's a good idea to get Q to support as well. Also, if you want an older version such as 2.5 or even 2.60, just look for one that says Cycles Build. So you can see down there, and there's a few more of them around. Alright, so just click on whichever one you want to download. Click on Download, and simply just put it in a folder, fire it up, and it should work straight away. If it doesn't work, then you'll probably download it a 64 bit when you have a 32-bit computer, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so popping over into Blender, the first thing we want to do is we want to switch from the Blender render over to Cycles. That will enable our Cycles rendering engine. And if you just come into the world settings, you can now click Use Nodes. Now, use nodes is basically just an interface for the node editor. So, if you want to do more advanced node setups, you can just go straight into the the node editor and or compositor, as you might often refer to it as, and then fiddle around with it in there. But for now, we'll just use it in our world settings. So, underneath background, you've noticed we've got this color value. Now, we don't want a gray background. What we want is a dynamic, cloudy sky kind of background. So if you click on the little dot next to the color, you can now pull up Sky Texture. And if you select that, you can move around the direction of the sun, change turbidity and strength. So if we change it down, we've got the viewport shading button. If you switch that over to rendered, you'll notice we're now rendering our cube. I'm also going to quickly switch this over to GPU rendering just so it's a little faster and where's my integrator, there it is let's go preview, say 20 samples alright that's just personal preference by the way just so I can show you a lot more detail for this render alright so as you can see we can just move around in, in the view perfectly fine now just a quick quick tip, turbidity affects the cloudiness of the sky. So you keep turning this up, you'll notice that the that the sky does change quite a bit. If you turn it down, for example, all the way down to like one, you'll notice we have basically just a flat line between our blue sky and our white floor. So just bear this video in mind, we're going to use a value of 3 for this tutorial, just so we can get a nice sort of glowy look. And of course strength affects the strength, but I'm sure you heard any of that. Okay. Now, floating jewellery doesn't really look all that realistic. So I'm going to first turn on my keyframe display so you can see what I'm doing. And we need to delete our default cube lamp and camera. We're not going to be using any lights in the scene um, 
and we actually want to just start off, well we won't delete the camera now that I think about it, um, we want to start off by just creating a floor plane that it can sit on. So by pressing shift C you can make sure that our cursor is at the centre of the grid and shift A add mesh plane and now you want to scale it all the way up. We want to make it so that you can't see the edges wherever our camera is going to be. So let's go scale can be, oh, let's set the dim dimensions to about 50. 50 by 50. And miles to set the Z as well. Alright. So there is our floor plane. Now we also want to select our camera and we want to move it to wherever we want the jewelry to be. Now you can do this by pressing G and move it along X, touch it X or press ZZ and we can zoom in and out. For me personally, just to position it quickly, I'm just going to press Shift F to enter fly mode and with my little 3D mouse I can now just position it wherever we like. That there should be fine. You can always change it later if you if you need to of course. 